the MLS share of the American soccer market as a whole is small, but the alarming part of that is that uh, the MLS slice is actually shrinking in terms of uh, the whole American soccer market pie. We had the uh, 2016 figure of uh, MLS capturing 7% of the USA soccer market and the 2017 numbers are now in here in early 2018 and MLS now captures a 6% share of the US soccer TV audience. So this micro slice that MLS captures in the American soccer market is uh, getting smaller. So no matter what MLS says about uh, uh, growth, whether it be uh, the, the ratings on TV, uh, web traffic numbers, social numbers, in-game attendance numbers, merchandise numbers, uh, it's clear that MLS is not winning over the American soccer market as a whole. So if we keep uh, going down this path, what's going to happen from here? Is it going to go down to 5%, 4%, 3%? Uh, aren't we supposed to see growth? Uh, shouldn't the MLS, since it's our own domestic competition, shouldn't it be growing at a faster rate than foreign soccer here in America? Yeah, people, more and more people will be interested in foreign soccer, but uh, won't the one here at home be the one that grows the fastest? Uh, you'd think so, but uh, not under a world ruled by uh, MLS and its monopoly over the U.S. Soccer D1 sanction. So it is clear, once again, that the American soccer public is speaking, that MLS, uh, they don't like MLS. They are ignoring it more and more, and they are flocking to watch authentic club soccer around the world, and of course, international soccer. So when we step back and, and assess where American soccer is at, you know, so we've poured so much uh, energy and focus and effort into trying to apologize for MLS shortcomings or or pull the strings, rearrange things so that uh, MLS has an easier time of it. Uh, we need this special Division I exemption in order for MLS to survive and grow. We have to basically ignore FIFA's mandate of an open system in order for MLS to survive. The, the old training wheels. Uh, despite all these provisions, despite having exclusive monopoly, insulation from any competition outside of Division I, MLS still cannot capture consumers. So as an American soccer public, as a USA soccer governing federation, our current federation, USSF, is MLS the way forward? Is giving exclusive rights to our Division I sanction best practice? Look at 99% of the free world. They use open systems with promotion and relegation, and they've had wild success. The Spanish FA doesn't give the D1 sanction in Spain to Real Madrid. The English FA doesn't give the D1 sanction to Manchester United exclusively. Everyone has a fair chance, and you see lots of, of thriving clubs, great competition, not just in the first tier, but also down in the second, third, and fourth, and beyond. Promotion and relegation battles, clubs rising from the uh, humble lower tiers and making it up into their nation's Division One. We are robbed of these storylines in American soccer. And beyond just sporting intrigue and sporting entertainment, uh, it is a economic right to have a fair shot at the USA Soccer Division I sanction. There are ramifications beyond just sport at play here. There are, there's real uh, money at stake and, of course, the opportunity for uh, administrators, coaches, players, fans to uh, build something and and uh, climb up the U.S. Soccer Division ladder to Division One, and of 
course, the social ramifications of that. So the numbers are not lying. The most uh, critical number to uh, judge MLS popularity is TV ratings. Those uh, give us the best indicator on whether MLS is the answer or not for American soccer. And we are seeing with each passing year that the MLS slice is shrinking. So we, do we really need to keep apologizing, keep making special uh, concessions for MLS? Or should we do the right thing and align American soccer with the rest of the free world? Open the market, give everyone a chance to compete, everyone a chance to build something. Lower division clubs are either going to struggle or they won't be founded when there's no incentive to, uh, to gain. If you are excellent, if you win matches in the lower divisions, you can't get promoted. So why pour your time and energy and money into it? And we wonder why our lower division soccer is so unstable here, why we can't pay our players in the lower divisions, why most of our clubs in the lower divisions are amateurs, why we have these pro clubs locked in the lower divisions collapsing each and every year. There's no chance of return on investment. So smart, insane investors are passing on the opportunity. And we can't fault them whatsoever. We cannot build American soccer on the backs of volunteer hours and, and charity must be built on real opportunity, market opportunity. And until we change this one policy of closed system versus open system, we will not see the interest and investment that uh, U.S. soccer has the potential to attract. So. Look at the rest of the free world. That's all we need to do. Will we ignore the elephant in the room or will we, will we finally come to our senses and align American soccer with the rest of the free world? We don't have a soccer problem here in America. Soccer is already a big sport. What we have here is a MLS and closed Division I problem. And that is the fault of our governing soccer federation, USSF. So if you like this video, make sure to share it out across social media and also subscribe right here to my channel. And I'll talk to you soon.